Welcome back to the STM32 Beginner's Guide Series. My name is Ali and you are watching CGHQ. In today's video, we're going to learn about timer interrupt. A timer interrupt is an event generated by a hardware timer on the microcontroller. When the timer reaches a signal value, an interrupt is triggered, which is a signal to the CPU to pause the current task and to execute a special function known as the interrupt service routine. When working with timers, there are two things that we need to consider, which is the frequency of our timer and the time it takes for our timer to roll over and start counting again. So the timer frequency is calculated as the system clock frequency divided by one plus the prescaler value because we start counting from zero. So for example, let's say we choose a prescaler value of 8400. The STM32F01RE has a system clock frequency of 84 megahertz. So to calculate the timer frequency, we say 84 megahertz divided by the 8400 prescaler value that we chose and we get a frequency of 10,000 hertz. And then to determine the rollover time, which is the time it takes for our counter to finish counting up to the maximum value and to roll over and trigger an interrupt and start counting again from zero we say one divided by the frequency multiplied by a counter period value that we can also choose so for example if you want our timer to trigger an interrupt every 0.2 seconds we would say one divided by 10,000 heads multiplied by 2000 which is 0.2 seconds to start coding open up stm32 cube ide and click on create a new stm32 project then go to board selector and type in the part number of the microcontroller that you have. Then click on the microcontroller, click on next. For project name, we can just call our project INT for interrupt and we're going to save it in the default location. To demonstrate how timers work, we're going to use four different timers uh, to blink four different LEDs at different rate. So to initialize the timers, go to it says timers and then the timers we're going to use is timer two, three, four and five. So here under timer 2, go to clock source and select internal clock. And then go to NVIC settings and enable the timer 2 global interrupt. Go back to parameter settings. And then here we're going to input the values we just calculated. So our prescaler value would be 8400 minus 1 because we start counting from 0. And then our counter period would be 2000 minus 1 so that our timer triggers an interrupt every 0 0.2 seconds. We're going to do the same thing for timer 3. So for the clock source, just click on internal clock, enable the timer 3 global interrupt, and then under parameters, we're going to type 8400 minus 1. And then for the counter period, this one we wanted to blink the LED at the different rate than the first timer. So here, instead of saying 2000 minus 1, we're going to say 4000 minus 1. And then for timer 4, we're going to do the same thing again. Enable the internal clock, enable the timer for global interrupt, and then under parameters for the prescaler value type 8400 minus one. And then for the counter period, this one will say 6000 minus one, so that it triggers an interrupt every 0 0.6 seconds. And then for the last timer, we're going to enable the internal clock as well enable the timer 5 global interrupt set the prescaler to 8400 minus 1 and then counter period is going to be 8000 minus 1 and then the leds that we're going to be using are going to be connected to the pins pa5 pa6 pa7 and pa8 so connect the positive terminals of four different leds to these pins and then ground all the negative terminals of the LEDs through resistors. You can use 220 ohm resistors for this application. Once you're done setting up the hardware connection, go to PA5 and initialize it as GPIO output, and then do the same for all the other pins as well. Our microcontroller is rated to operate at 84 megahertz, but it may not be set to this maximum frequency straight from the box. So you need to go to clock configuration. And as you can see, my microcontroller is currently set to operate at 16 megahertz. So I'm going to change this to 84 megahertz. When this is done, just click on control and S or scroll, go to file and click on save file. Generate the new code and switch to the new perspective. In the main C file, scroll all the way down to hear where it says user code begin to type hal underscore tim underscore base hold control click on space for auto completion and double click on this one that says 
timer base underscore start underscore it because we want our timers to be attached to interrupt and then select on timer 2 then you can just copy this line of code and paste it three more times and then change this to timer 3 timer 4 and timer 5 and then when this is done we don't really need to put anything in our main while loop so what we need to do is that we need to put some code in the main interrupt service routine for each and every single one of these timers. To find the interrupt service routine, go to drivers and then go here where it says STM32 HAL driver. Click on the SRC and then look for where it says HAL underscore time dot C. Double click, press Ctrl F and search for period elapsed callback. And then copy this function that says void hal underscore timer underscore period elapsed callback go back to the main c file and scroll all the way down to where it says user code begin for and then paste that function that we copied here in user code begin for so we can just create simple if statement to toggle the four different LEDs that we have at different rates for each and every timer that we are using so you can say if right h team Hold on control and click space and then click on this one that says double click on this one that says instance and then say is equals to team 2. When timer 2 rolls over and the timer 2 interrupt has been triggered, we want a an LED that is attached to pin PA5 to be toggled. So we're going to say HAL underscore GPIO. Hold on control click space for auto completion and go to this one that says toggle pin. Double click. And then the GPIO that we're using is GPIO A and we want to toggle pin 5. And then you can copy this if statement and paste it three more times. So this is going to be for timer 2. We can change this one to timer 3, change this one to timer 4, and then this one to timer 5. And then change the GPIO pin here to pin 6, pin 7, and pin 8. When this is done, we can click on the build icon to see if our code has any errors. And as you can see, our code finished building with zero errors and zero warnings. Press on this green play button to run the code and upload it onto our microcontroller. When the code finishes uploading to our microcontroller, we can see that the four different LEDs are now blinking at different rates. This means that our counters are counting up to the counter value that we selected. And when they roll over, an interrupt is triggered for each and every single one of the interrupts. And our four LEDs that are attached to this interrupt are being toggled at the specific rate. Timer interrupts are a great way for our microcontroller to handle multiple tasks simultaneously. We could have just decided to toggle our LEDs in the main while loop by using delays in between. Sometimes that wouldn't be a good idea because when our microcontroller executes a delay, it wastes time and it wastes CPU cycles while executing that delay. So it basically does nothing during that delay. And when we use timers, instead of wasting time waiting for a delay, we can do other tasks while our timers are counting in the background. This way our microcontroller is able to handle many different tasks simultaneously saving our cpu processing cycles if you found this video helpful please let me know in the comment section below and if you have any questions or any feedback please also let me know in the comment section below and also please like share and subscribe to get more content like this you can also check out the full stm32 beginners guide series i will attach links to all the different videos in those videos i cover topics like adc which is analog to digital conversion i cover pwm and i cover other topics such as uart thank you so much for watching see you in the next video